Hello everybody, I'm just checking you can see me. Um, welcome to this Friday teaching session again. I'm hoping that you're going to find these useful. First one was last week, we talked about uh, PEEP, had a bit of a conversation about that. And I forgot to show you a video actually, which is on my uh, web page. So if you just go to criticalcarepractitioner.co.uk and search under PEEP, there's a video on there as well, which is quite interesting. It shows a pair of pig's lungs, I'm assuming, being inflated with and without PEEP. And I meant to show you last week and I forgot. So that's my bad. So go and have a look at that. Welcome to the live stream. As I say, um, we are going to be doing this regularly, um, aiming for once a week on a Friday. Actually, next week's going to have to be on a Thursday because uh, my shifts have been changed, so I'm going to have to work next Friday. But I'll let everybody know that it's a Thursday rather than a Friday. You might also want to take a chance to point uh, to have a look at my other resources. Uh, so you've got uh, me on Twitter at CC Practitioner. Uh, you've got my podcasts, so if you go to iTunes and look for the Critical Care Practitioner podcasts, and I'm converting these into podcasts as well. Uh, you've also got my website, of course, which is criticalcarepractitioner.co.uk, as you can see there. And also, um, my courses are at criticalcarepractitioner.podia.com. Um, and I want to let you know that um, within a couple of weeks from today, um, I'm going to be discounting the mechanical ventilation course again. It's currently running at £47. Um, it's good value. There's lots of videos on there, lots of learning. But for one week only, I'm going to discount it to £27. So you might want to keep an eye out on that. If you go to the Podia page, you can uh, sign up for my email letter and you'll be informed when that happens. The other thing I'm trying to do is build a Facebook group. So I've got a Facebook page, uh, Critical Care Practitioner Facebook page, but I'm trying to build a group as well. The main reason being that um, I think it would be nice um, to talk to each other. Mike, um, is it in-depth or just basic? Um, I'll let you be the judge of that. The good news though, Mike, is if you buy it um, and you're not satisfied with the product, as long as you let me know within 14 days, I promise you I will refund your money. Um, that's an absolute promise on my part. So if it's too basic for you, it's not that basic. There's quite a lot of detail in there, um, but it depends where you are, Mike. It depends where you are on your learning curve. But like I say, um, I will happily refund your money. Absolutely no questions asked. You don't need to give me a reason. You just say, I want a refund. That's fine. No offense caused and we can get on with it. The links today's chat, uh, today's conversation I've put in the chat as well, which I think you can see there. So by all means, um, go to um, Critical Care Skills with the Critical Care Practitioner um, and it will um, get you as part of the group. And then eventually these conversations are going to move over to the group from the Facebook page. I'm going to move it over to there just to try and encourage people over that way so we can talk to each other. So what are we talking about this week? We are talking about peak and plateau pressure and why do we care? So the first thing that we need to understand um, is that the inspiratory part of the breath for purposes of this discussion has two phases, inspiration and inspiratory hold. And I think you can see from the diagram here that the pressure curve that you get on the ventilator, the first thing I've got to say, however, is that when we're talking about peak and plateau pressure, we're really talking about volume controlled ventilation as opposed to pressure controlled ventilation. If you're not sure what the difference is there, basically, if we tell the machine um, to deliver 500 mils per breath, regardless of the pressure, then that is volume controlled ventilation. If, however, we say to the ventilator, deliver 30 centimetres of pressure, regardless of the volume that you deliver with that pressure, that is pressure controlled ventilation. So we're talking really here about volume controlled ventilation and we're looking at peak inspiratory pressure and plateau pressure. So you can see on the diagram here that we've got pressure down the left hand side and time along the bottom. We've um, instilled a little bit of peep. So you can see the peep there is reflected in the fact that the line doesn't go down to the baseline. It doesn't go down to zero because 
like I said last week, most of our patients we're going to be giving some PEEP to, um, usually at least five centimetres, sometimes more. Again, go back to last week's conversation about that. The jury's still out about how, how much PEEP we should actually be giving, um, but that's a whole other conversation. So the machine is now delivering a tidal volume. So we have, for example, said, let's give this patient 500 mils. The ventilator will deliver that 500 mils and in the delivery of that 500 mils, it's going to get to a certain pressure um, in order to, for that 500 mils to get in. Um, and that delivery is mainly down to the resistance in the airways. So um, this is the main bronchi and the smaller airways. If they are very resistant, then the pressure is going to be higher. If they're not so resistant, then the pressure is going to be lower. Um, there's a real relationship between the two. Then when that breath has been delivered, so you can imagine blowing up a balloon. You blow up a balloon, you're having to blow really, 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 really hard to get that balloon to actually inflate. And then if you keep your mouth around the balloon and just stop blowing, so that the balloon doesn't go down, but it doesn't go up either. You've basically equalized the pressure between you and the balloon. And this is essentially what's happening when we get to plateau pressure. So now I'm not blowing hard enough to actually inflate the balloon, but I'm keeping enough pressure in there to stop it deflating. And that is plateau pressure. And plateau pressure is more about your compliance of the lung. Rather than the resistance, it's more to do with the compliance of the lung. So if the lung is nice and compliant, nice and elastic, um, then it doesn't take so much pressure um, to actually keep that alveoli inflated. The walls aren't too stiff. It's got some elasticity in it. It's not so, it's not so hard to keep that plateau pressure where it is. If we've got stiff lungs, um, then we're going to have an issue with um, that plateau pressure. So just to go back to my notes, because I have written some notes here. So as the gas, gas enters the lungs, it will encounter flow and resistance changes through the airways, which will dictate the pressure needed to entrain a certain volume of gas. So changes in the airway pressures are reflective of issues in the airways and not the alveoli. That's probably the biggest difference. The airway pressure is commonly referred to as the peak inspiratory pressure, or you may just have heard of it re referred to as peak pressure. Uh, and to prevent trauma to the lung, um, this is commonly accepted as being no higher than 35 centimetres of water. Now, during the inspiratory pause, so the flat, tarp, flat part of this diagram, or the plateau, um, the flow is now zero. There's neither flow in nor out. So the pressure in the airways and the alveoli is equalized. Uh, and this can be achieved in the apneic ventilated patient by holding the inspiratory pause button. Um, and the pressure number obtained is now reflective of alveolar pressure or plateau pressure. So a high degree, so it's, sorry, sorry, to a degree, high peak pressures can reflect issues with both resistance of the airway and compliance of the lung, whilst plateau pressures are more reflective of compliance only. So if you get those peak pressures, it's, it's kind of a combination of resistance and compliance, whilst the plateau pressure is more to do with the compliance. One thing to remember is that pulmonary emboli don't change resistance or compliance, and, and that makes sense, doesn't it? Because pulmonary emboli um, are problems with the circulation, not with the lungs. Um, effectively, it causes a problem uh, with gas exchange, but not because of the action directly on the lung itself, but rather than the circulation through the lungs. Now, plugging or bronchus bronchospasm can increase airway resistance and peak pressure. So dynamic compliance curves shift to the right and flattens, and the plateau pressures and static compliance are unchanged. If you don't know what a dynamic compliance curve is, that's something I'm hoping I'm going to be able to cover in the next few weeks. But basically what's happening um, is that that plugging or bronchospasm is causing greater resistance, and therefore that's reflected in the peak pressure. Now, Things like tension pneumothoraces, atelectasis, pulmonary edema, pneumonia, and bronchial intubation can cause reduced lung compliance, which increases both peak pressure and plateau pressure. So both static and dynamic compliance actually fall. Interesting article um, is peak versus airway plateau, plateau pressure. I haven't actually put that in the links, but I'll make sure that I do that. Um, 
but but why do we care about high pressures? Why why is that so important? Because we get very excited about pressures of 30 to 35 centimetres. I know a lot of our COVID patients were getting higher pressures than that, certainly later on in the disease process. And usually it was a, a fairly tragic sign that these patients weren't going to do so well. Uh, so let me just, there we go. Um, so why do we care? Well, barotrauma, um, can result in acute lung injury um, and this can lead to ARDS or air leak. So you get things like uh, a pneumothorax or a pneumomediastinum. An excessive intrathoracic pressure may also result. Remember, it's not just the pressure in the lungs, we're actually causing more pressure in the chest itself as well. Um, so this can have potential hemodynamic consequences. Again, remember last week we talked about PEEP, greater PEEP. Um, causes uh, a lowered venous return because that increased thoracic pressure doesn't allow the um, increased venous return you get from the right atrium um, expanding and contracting like it would do normally, creating this slight drop in pressure itself. If you're increasing that pressure, you're therefore having hemodynamic uh, consequences, consequences. And this is especially true um, if you, um, um, with the decreased venous return, it leading to hypertension and, and potentially a cardiac arrest. And the high airway pressures can also result in inadequate ventilation. Um, and again, Life in the Fast Lane uh, has done a good article on this, on high airway on alveolar pressures. And again, I haven't put it in the links, uh, but I will put it in the links on my web page um, where this conversation is based from. So that's peak and, peak and plateau pressures, basically. So a peak pressure indicative of uh, a high resistance and possibly poor compliance. A plateau pressure is probably more compliance than resistance. Uh, high resistance, um, you're probably going to have a plug or a bronchospasm. Poor compliance could be due to the pathology within the lung, so ARDS or pneumonias, things like that. OK, the other thing that caught my eye this week, because I'm trying to uh, bring things up to you that catch my eye, was the uh, recovery RS, tri uh, RS trial. I'm a big one on Twitter. Um, and the recovery RS trial was a trial that my critical care unit played a part in. Uh, and this trial ran over some of the most difficult times of the COVID waves. And, and for me, that left a lot of bad memories. I don't know about you out there. So it's good to see something come out of it. So the the trial was a study of CPAP, high flow nasal oxygen and conventional oxygen therapy for patients with ARDS. And the primary outcome was a composite of tracheal intubational mortality within 38 days and uh, sorry, 30 days. And this involved 1,272 patients. CPAP was compared, compared with conventional oxygen therapy. Uh, and compared to that, it reduced the outcome of intubation or death within 30 days. So if you give someone CPAP rather than just normal oxygen therapy, you are going to reduce their outcome of um, intubation or death. There was no effect observed compared with conventional oxygen therapy with the use of high flow nasal oxygen. So whilst it's important, I think that we continue to use high flow nasal oxygen, um, the study very much found that CPAP was the thing to use. However, what we've got to remember is patient comfort is quite important. And, and a lot of patients can only tolerate CPAP for very short periods of time. Some people can't tolerate it at all. Um, and that's when we used to flip between CPAP and high flow nasal oxygen. Um, so just bear that in mind. OK, um, I've put the links to this in the chat. Um, and I'll put the link to the review by my friends over at the bottom line. Uh, if you've not come across the bottom line, just type in the bottom line. And there's a lot of critical care studies that have been uh, reviewed by a lot of my friends over there. So that's it. That's your free Friday 15 minutes for today. Um, I hope it's been useful. Um, if it has, give it a thumbs up and a like, depending where you are. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Twitch, I'm on YouTube, and I'm on Facebook, so I'm all over the place. I hope it's helpful. Um, let me know what you think, uh, what topics you might want to be covered. I know several people have talked about things like ABGs and ECGs. They're a little bit tough to cover in 15 minutes, but maybe I can cover small parts of them in 15 minutes. Uh, thank you, Yvette. That's absolutely fine. Uh, I'm glad you found it useful. And uh, next Thursday, I'll let you know what the topic pretty soon. Not absolutely sure what it is at the moment, but hopefully I will see you next Thursday. Keep an eye out. Like I say, 
all those resources you can go to. I'm all over the place. This will be produced as a podcast as well. Uh, and thank you, Lauren. That's great. Sunderland Northeast. Claire, no problem. I'll say goodbye now and I'll see you next.